community, service, support, growing closer to God. The First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ of Bristol, Connecticut, seeks to make the world a better place for all people by sharing Christ's love. I welcome you to worship with the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Bristol, Connecticut, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. My name is the Reverend Kristen Kleiman. Please call me Kristen. Whether you are a longtime attender or this is your first service, whether you are worshiping live or later, whether you are in the sanctuary or online, you belong to God and you belong to this Christian community. For those worshiping online, I look forward to interacting with you through the comment section on Facebook, and I hope that you'll share a greeting and any prayers in the comment section. I hope everyone gathered in the sanctuary had the opportunity to sign in the friendship sheet by the door on your way in. It's also a great place to leave me notes. If you are in need of a restroom during the service, there is an accessible all gender one behind you in the narthex and other accessible restrooms in the atrium. And all of these restrooms have a changing table. SCC's Christmas Fair and Festival of Incredible Food Creations is coming so very soon. This is a great fundraiser that raises money for the church and also for St. Vincent de Paul Homeless Shelter. And your help is needed. Two weeks from today on Sunday, December 1st, I hope that you will stay after worship and fellowship to help decorate the church building. Uh, help is also needed on the day of the fair, Saturday, December 7th. Signups are in FCC's database, which is called Breeze. If you don't have an access or login yet, please email Pat in the church office. Um, for the decorating, there's also a paper sign up in the atrium. I was going to say with the giving tree gift tags. Um, however, all of those giving tree uh, gift tags have been adopted. So thank you for your generosity that 30 tags went right before worship. If you are not aware, um, the Giving Tree partners with the Family Resource Center to help children here in Bristol. So the safety team is having an initial meeting today in the Century Room, which is all the way down the, the hall. It's a yellow room. Outreach and Service is meeting in the library, which is down and to the left down the hall. And tonight... Youth Choir, Confirmation, and Youth Group are all invited to Kids Cook for a Cause from 5 to 7 p.m. We are going to be, I'm going to feed you pizza, and then you guys are going to learn how to make brownies and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to share with some of our ministry partners up here on Federal Hill. There's a lot more going on in the life of the First Congregational Church, so I invite you to read the announcements that were on the screen or in your paper bulletin or to sign up for the weekly email newsletter to find out all about FCC's ministry and events. And in this time of centering, right, in this time of centering, I invite you to become intentionally aware of God's presence by taking three deep slow breaths, breathing in God's love, breathing in God's peace, breathing in God's hope.
I invite you to join me in our call to worship as printed in our bulletin or on the screen in front of you. Together, we are Christ's community. Together, we are God's love in the world. Glory and honor to you, holy God, for all the ways you provide us hope, spread unconditional love, and improve our lives and the world. screen in front of you. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus who was willing to walk in our footsteps. Thank you for Jesus who encourages us to see things through others' eyes and feel what they are feeling. Thank you for Jesus who teaches us to have empathy for all. In his spirit, we pray as he taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture passage today comes from the Gospel of Luke, and it is often known as the parable of the Good Samaritan. An expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and took off, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came upon him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating them with oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise.
the Vitality Ministry team as they encourage all of us to take the next step in our Christian faith journeys, thought that we would try something new for Time for Story. Since the time, I feel like I'm not on. Can you hear me? Okay. Since the Time for Story is really a time for all of us to hear God's word, we decided to buy lots of copies of Archbishop Desmond Tutu's Children of God Storybook Bible. Now, I realize as I put them out on Friday, not enough copies. So not all of the pews have one. But, um, but there are a lot of them on the center aisle. Um, or youth choir, you can go across and get the one on this center aisle. You can still enjoy the stories, but there are beautiful pictures in all of these books. So I hope that regardless of your age, that you will... No, they have one. There was one there. Hmm? Okay. Um, regardless of your age, I hope that you will open one of these books, um, page 80. They were given by a gen generous donor who made this, as well as we have Advent books, so all of them possible. So it is the story that I just that I just read you from Scripture. Okay, so page 80. And I have it so you could look at the picture because the art is just as much moving us to connect with God as the words. Jesus said, all you need to remember is to love God and love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. But who is my neighbor, a teacher asked. Jesus told a story to explain. One day, a Jewish man was robbed and wounded and left lying in the road. A little while later, a priest walked by, but he pretended he didn't see the injured man. Soon, another man came by. He worked at the temple, but he didn't stop either. At last, a Samaritan came down the road. His people were enemies of the Jews, but the Samaritan stopped he got off his donkey and gently bandaged the man's wounds. Then he put him on his donkey and walked beside him to the nearest inn. He put him to bed and took care of him. Now, asked Jesus, which of these people was a good neighbor? The Samaritan replied the teacher. That's right, said Jesus. You are all part of the same family, God's family. God wants you to be like him. Loving and kind to everyone, even your enemies. Knowing that Jesus calls us all to share peace with all the world, with everyone, even those who are quite different from us, I invite us now to stand and to share the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ be with you.
like to be seated. Are you ever sure that something is in the Bible and that it's not? I was so certain that don't judge somebody unless you have walked a mile in their shoes was in the Bible. Turns out it's a Cheyenne Native American proverb. What Jesus actually said was, if anyone wants to take your shirt, give your coat as well. And if anybody forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Not at all the same. Hopefully you won't judge me though, but feel free to walk or rather run a mile in my shoes, especially on Thanksgiving when our family is doing the Manchester Road Race, which I was also mistaken out. Turns out it's 4.737 miles and not 3.1. So I could really use that help with the extra mile and wherever Jack is, shh, don't tell him. <laughs> Surprise! You'll do it fine. You'll do it fine. So this proverb, don't judge someone unless you have walked a mile in their shoes, or rather walked two moons in their moccasins, has been in my head as I have been reading about compassion and empathy. And here are some things that I have learned. Although their meanings overlap, Compassion and empathy are not exact synonyms. Compassion is feeling another's pain, their suffering and heartache. The prefix C-O-M always means with. Communion, companion, combination. So compassion means to suffer with, or rather to feel like you are suffering with. Empathy, on the other hand, feels another's joys as well as their sorrows and then goes one step farther. As Roman Krizner, there's no vowels here, Krizner-ak says in his book, Empathy, Why It Matters and How to Get It. Empathy is the art of stepping imaginatively into the shoes of another person understanding their feelings and perspectives, and using that understanding to guide your actions. Empathy invites us to feel what another person feels, to think as another person thinks, and then to act upon that understanding. Empathy is compassion in action. Here's something else I learned about empathy and compassion. Most of us learn empathy and compassion from our primary childhood caregivers. It is their compassion for us, their empathy directed toward us that teaches us how to be empathetic and compassionate. Able to step imaginatively into another's shoes and understand why they feel what they feel and why they have made the choices that they have made. Psychologist Alan Schroof says it so well. How do you get an empathic child? You get an empathic child not by trying to teach the child and admonish the child to be empathic. You get an empathic child by being empathic with the child. The child's understanding of relationships can only be from the relationships he or she's experienced. And yet, an estimated one in three people did not have an empathetic relationship with their primary childhood caregiver. And according to the University of Michigan study, there has been a dramatic decline in empathy levels among young Americans between 1980 and 2014 when this book was published. The shift, researchers say, is in part due to people living alone and spending less time engaged in social and community activities that nurture empathic sensitivity. All hope is not lost though, because like learning a new language or a new musical instrument, while it might be easier to learn empathy as a child, it is very possible at all stages of our lives 
to become more empathetic. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that within each one of us is the enormous potential to be more empathetic toward our neighbors, toward all of our neighbors. And Jesus knew that the way to nurture empathy was not to shame us or to say over and over again how important empathy is. Jesus knew the best way to nurture empathy was to show empathy. So when the expert of the law comes to Jesus, spoiling for a fight, wanting to test Jesus and likely show Jesus up as a fool, oh, how we love to be right instead of kind. When this expert in the law comes to Jesus with a chip on his shoulder saying, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus does not respond defenselessly. Jesus responds with empathy. Jesus engages the expert in conversation and then affirms the expert saying, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. Now perhaps the expert is one in, was one of those one in three people who did not receive compassion and empathy as a child because he goes on wanting to prove how right he is and who is my neighbor. Anyone else want to just sigh? Right? But Jesus doesn't sigh. Instead, Jesus steps into the man's shoes. He steps into the man's heart, into the man's mind, and Jesus tells him a story. A story about a man who might have just been like him. A man who was traveling what was known to be a dangerous and desolate road. And yet the only way from Jericho to Jerusalem was this road. And while on this dangerous and desolate road, the man was robbed, beaten, and left for dead. Two people went by. Two people who by their very descriptions were also experts in the law and should have been the most upright and faithful of all people. Two good people went by and pretended not to see the man. Two faithful, upright people did not want to feel the pain the man was feeling, even if only from a distance. They didn't want to think that a few minutes, hours difference, and that could have been them by the side of the road. They didn't want to be moved to act. So they closed their hearts, they closed their minds, and they walked by. Not the Samaritan. There were any number of reasons why he too could have justified walking on. The Samaritan could have been afraid that the robbers were close by looking for another victim. Or he could have used any of the xenophobic terms we use to demean others and justify denying them the most basic of human kindnesses. After all, the victim of the robbers was not of the Samaritan's people of his religion, of his country? Why should the Samaritan take care of him? Maybe that man was a criminal. Maybe he got what he deserved. Maybe it was better if there was one less of those people in the world. If the Samaritan thought any of those things, Jesus' story doesn't tell us. Instead, Jesus says the Samaritan was moved with compassion. Different as they might be, the Samaritan tried to think as the man thought, feel as the man felt, and the Samaritan did what he hoped any neighbor, any good neighbor would do. Remember though, this is a story within a story. The story of the Good Samaritan was Jesus' way of connecting with the expert in the law and kindly and compassionately inviting the expert to consider that even when two people are very different, they are not necessarily enemies. That even when two people, like the man and the Good Samaritan, like the expert and Jesus, seem to be on opposite sides, there is still the possibility of understanding, of compassion, of empathy, 
because in the end, we are all part of one family, God's family. Was the expert in the law changed by the story? Was he changed by this encounter with Jesus? I hope so. I hope that we can all grow, that we can all nurture within us the incredible potential to imaginatively step into another's shoes, that we might all look up from our busy schedules and our phones, lay down our prejudices and the hurts that have created them, and see each person in front of us as a child of God who is in need of understanding, of empathy, of love. And if we all grow just a little in our ability to be empathetic, to walk in another's moccasins and not judge so much, then maybe, just maybe, others will grow a little bit too. And our lives, our relationships, our world will be kinder and more considerate, truly a place of peace and love for all. Amen. I invite you now into a time of listening. Perhaps you might listen for who God is calling you to be more empathetic to. Maybe you have a difficult neighbor. Um, So I invite you to hear how God is speaking to your heart on this day, calling you forward in Christ's love. Holy God, holy God, guide us each and every day. Open our hearts to listen to you. Open our minds to the ability to imagine what it's like to walk in someone else's shoes. We pray in Christ's love. Amen. Even as I share that message with you, I am aware that it is so very exhausting to be empathetic, right? To, to try to think about everybody else's situations and, and their hurts. And there are so many people in our world who are going through such traumatic situations right now. So I invite you into this time where we can share together our joys and our concerns, those sorrows that we have brought, but also lift each other up with the celebrations of this day. Prayers that you'd like to share. Oh, I've got so many. (laughs) So the way that God moves, right? It's Friday night, late. I should not still be on my computer, but but I am because I'm still working on this sermon. And a member of our church writes that um, Emily Asterby, whose sister, her family was a member of this church and her sister died as a teenager from cancer, that Emily herself is in the hospital um, in critical care with a a kidney issue. And so I just ask you to pray for Emily and to pray for her mother, Judy. And um, see what I said about like, oh, you just want to be the people who walk by other people's needs, right? It just feels so heavy, but we're called to just walk with people and walk beside them. So I invite you to pray for Emily. I left my prayer list down there, but we pray as well for Dennis M. 
And, um, and I pray for my friend Angie, who has indeed been diagnosed with leukemia on top of diabetes and MS. And so I pray for those who are going through cancer journeys. I pray for those who are diagnosed with MS and living with this chronic condition. So we, um, we look with joy towards, I have to do math, five, to your fifth grandchild being born in January, potentially. And we also pray for your fourth grandchild being baptized today at our, um, our fellow church in Southington. I want to lift up birthdays for Roger S., who is this Wednesday. And my godson, Philip, turns 16 on Friday, so. Wow, really? Okay. <laughs> Let us be together in prayer, and I know you have things on your heart, so you'll just lift them up to God in your hearts. Holy God, you walk beside us, you carry us, you lead us forward, and we thank you. We thank you for being always present with us, for being the one who will always listen to us when we are in such need, when our hearts are lamenting, when we are afraid, when we don't know what the next step in this journey will be. And so as we pray for all the people of our world, as we pray for our elected leaders and our nation, we also pray for ourselves and for those near and dear to us. We pray for Emily, we pray for Dennis, we pray for Angie, for Don, Stan, John, Janet, Arlene, Cindy, Julie, Karen and Doug, Claire and Darrell, Bob and Nancy, Whitney, Joe and Sandy, Aaron and Turner, Pam and Gary, Olivia, Lucas, Barbara, David and Stephanie. In addition to all those that we have named out loud, Lord, hear our prayers for those that we know and are close to who are in need of your healing spirit to be upon them. We pray this day, Lord, for families who are struggling with how to be together in times of divorce and separation and crisis. I pray for those who are housing and food insecure, as well as those who are under and unemployed, for those who are incarcerated, for those struggling with addiction, depression, mental illness, PTSD, and chronic diseases. I pray for all who are discriminated against, and especially the transgender community. As we continue to pray for our veterans, our active military, our National Guard, and our first responders. As you inspire them to serve faithfully, we pray also, Lord, for the safety of our medical and our teaching staffs, as well as our students. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our world and for all who are working to bring about Empathy, compassion, and love. <clears throat> and we share together a joy, Lord. We share for birthdays to be celebrated. We share for new jobs to be started tomorrow. We share in wedding anniversaries to be celebrated. 
Friendsgivings and early thanksgivings with family. We thank you for the ministry of our church that is able to share generously with others, helping them know that there is hope in the world, that they are loved and important. And so I thank you for all the ministries of our church that reach out and nurture people spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Gracious and loving God, we offer to you all these prayers and so many more in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. The only problem with mini kids club is getting through them, right? Yeah. Just a fun maze of kids. <laughs> Good morning. morning. As you know, December 7th, fast approaching Christmas fair and festival of incredible food creations. Outreach and service has purchased eight small Pre-built, let me say that again, pre-built. Gingerbread houses ready for decorating. If you are an individual or a couple or with a friend or your family would like to have some fun decorating one, please come next Sunday, November 24th, following worship to the Century Room. All the supplies will be provided courtesy of Outreach. A sign-up sheet, as Kristen has said, is available in the atrium. All the kits will be displayed at the Festival for Incredible Food Creations. At the end of the festival, you may pick up your creation to enjoy at home. The festival is a benefit for St. Vincent de Paul Mission of Bristol, which is one of our partners. St. Vincent de Paul operates a 24-bed residential shelter, and it is frequently over capacity. It provides temporary housing, meals, and services to its clients. In addition, there is a resource center that offers showers, use of laundry facilities, and social worker service, services to the unhoused. We at FCC help in three ways. Financially, through our 275th plus food creations, and by making a meal on a Sunday once per month. If you would like to know more or wish to help in any way, please see me, Rob, or anyone on Outreach. And I hope to see you next Sunday, ready to be creative and decorate these houses. <laughs>
and blessing our gifts with our unison prayer dedication. We do not always know what our neighbors need, holy God. You know, though. You love and care for all. We offer these gifts to you and Christ Church and ask you to bless them and use them to care for the lonely, the wounded, the forgotten, and the desperate. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. may go forth into your week knowing that God is present with you, that God is watching over you, and may you take that love that you feel from God, and may you share that love with others, being willing to walk in their shoes. May you share Christ's peace and Christ's love, even as you know Christ's peace and love. May we go forth in that spirit of love, peace, and unity. Amen.